KD all day. In this video, we will be talking about our special triangles. You always want to be able to identify when you are given special triangles on the GMAT because special triangles usually give you more information than you otherwise would have been given if you had just had regular triangles. Now, one thing you don't want to do is you do not want to assume that you have special triangles when in fact you don't. So we will not only go over the properties of special triangles, but also how to identify when you have them. So to start, the simplest type of special triangle is an isosceles triangle. And I have divided our special triangles into two categories, just regular special triangles. And then here I said special right triangles. Um, now I didn't want to call these over here special non-right triangles because it actually is possible that you can have uh, an isosceles right triangle. We'll talk about that in a second. I'm going to write this here as a reminder to myself. But, uh, so the, our special right triangles are really just uh, these are necessarily right triangles. So for an isosceles triangle, an isosceles triangle is just any triangle where two of the sides are the same, have the same length. And so if you have two sides with the same length, then it is necessarily true that the angles opposite those sides are also going to be the same. And so they can tell you that you have an isosceles triangle in two ways. They can give you two angles that are the same, and that would mean the sides opposite those angles are also the same, or they can give you two sides with the same length, which would mean the angles opposite those sides have the same length. So if they said, this side here is a length five, this side here is a length five, and then they told you this angle here is 40 degrees, it is necessarily true, this guy here is also 40 degrees. Now this does not mean that every time you have a triangle with two sides that have a length of five, the angles opposite those sides are always 40. It just means if one of those angles is 40, the other one must be 40 as well. So for an equilateral triangle though, that is a triangle where, as the name implies, all of the sides, have the same length, which means all the angles opposite those sides must also be the same. And so in equilateral triangles, unlike isosceles triangles, you always know what the measure of those angles are because if uh, all these angles have to be the same and a triangle, then a triangle, the angles always have to add up to 180 degrees. So for each of these angles, for an equilateral triangle is always 60. And so you don't necessarily know what the length of, of these sides are, but if one of them is 10, that means all of them are 10. So now let's talk about our special right triangles, and we'll start by talking about our 45, 45, 90 triangles. To know that you have a special triangle, you need to know two things. First, to know you have a special right triangle, you need to know two things. You need to know that you have a right triangle to start. And then once you know that you have a right triangle, you need to know either two of the angles. So that just means one additional angle in addition to the 90 degree angle. Or two of the sides. So let's start with 45, 45, 90 triangles. And so before we talk about identifying them, let's just assume you're given 45, 45, 90 triangle and what properties then you would know. So to start, you're told. We have a right triangle, and say, I tell you this angle is 45 degrees, this angle here is 45 degrees. If you were told this, so these two angles here are equal, that means the sides opposite those angles must also be equal. And so if you have a right triangle and two of its angles are equal to 45, and so this side here would be X, and therefore this side here also has to be X, then you can use Pythagorean theorem if you wanted to to calculate the value for your third side, the hypotenuse, but you shouldn't have to because the whole point of special triangles and special right triangles to just memorize these ratios so that when they come up, you can work on them quickly. So if this side is X, this side is X, and it's a right triangle, the hypotenuse must be X rad 2. And so this ratio always applies for 45, 49, 45, 45, 90 degree triangles. And so the side lengths, again, they always correspond to the angle, the side opposite the given angle. So opposite the first 45, you have an X. Opposite the second 45, you have another X. Then the side opposite your 90 is your X rad 2. Now, talking about isosceles right triangles, there's a reason I put it here. Because a 45, 45, 90 special right triangle is an isosceles triangle. Note that two of its sides are the same, two of its angles are the same. And so anytime they like to disguise 45, 45, 90 triangles, instead of saying 
I'm giving you a 45, 45, 90 triangle instead of using the term 45, 45, 90. Oftentimes they'll say, if you have an isosceles right triangle, and that is code for a 45, 45, 90. So if they ever give you an isosceles right triangle, you should know in your head right away, oh, that means 45, 45, 90. So now let's talk about 30, 60, 90 triangles. So these are a little bit more complicated because you don't have two angles that are the same here. We'll do the same as before. I'll just give you a 30, 60, 90 to start. We have a 90 degree. Then I say I have an angle here equal to 30, angle here equal to 60. What are these side ratios going to be? No, another ratio. So opposite the 30, the side here is going to give this a value of x. That would mean the side opposite your 60 has a value of x red 3. And therefore, your hypotenuse would have a length of 2x. So x, x red 3, 2x. And again, the side lengths correspond sides opposite given angles so one thing you do not want to do and we'll talk now about identifying 30 60 90 triangles is say you were given say uh, for this triangle here i told you you have a 90 degree angle to start so first i give you a right triangle and then say i give you two of the sides so i say this here is four this here is four at three because you know that you have a right triangle and two of the sides, you know that the third side is also going to be in your ratio. And so this side here would have to have a value of eight. And you also know how your angles line up because the side opposite the four is going to have to be the 30. Side opposite the four at three is going to have to be the 60. And the side opposite the 90 degree angle is going to have to be the eight or the hypotenuse. And so what you do not want to do is if I just gave you this, I do not tell you that you have a right triangle, but I say this side here is. Is a length of four. This side here is a length of four rad three. Do not then say, oh, this looks like a 30, 60, 90. Therefore, this must have a length of eight because you do not know that until you know that you have a right triangle. And the way you can think about this is this angle here, it could be coming off at any angle. So it can look like this. 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 There's no way that all of these are 30, 60, 90 triangles. And so you need to at least know that you have a right triangle before you can say you have a special right triangle. So do not make this mistake here. In the next few videos, we will talk about, we'll do some GMAT problems, line or properties for special triangles.